Welcome back to the Student Hub Live. We had a planning meeting about things that we thought students should really need to know about when they were starting out or continuing. And our colleagues in STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering and Math, had this fabulous idea, which I love, which is about studying around the holidays. Now, over Christmas, I'm not sure if you're like me, but I thought, ah, oh, two weeks off work, this will be absolutely amazing. And I had this to-do list of all these things that I would start to do. Then, of course, I got sick and then there was the wrapping and all this other stuff going on and it became really problematic. And I got to January feeling a little bit deflated. So I'm really looking forward to finding out how we can work around studying around the holidays. And uh, so to discuss this, I have um, Katie Sheacott and Sally Crichton from our maths department. Um, and this is one of two of your sessions this afternoon, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, you're going to talk a little bit later about study intensity, which I guess to some extent maps onto this. Um, and we've got David Healy back um, in the break between these two sessions. We've got some widgets. Do you have school aged children? Do you have child care cover arranged for the summer holidays? And have you booked a summer holiday yet? So some summary themes coming up, but also we're talking about, I guess, managing this workload. Yeah, that's right. Um, so when the title of Study Around Holidays was discussed, the reason I wanted to talk about it today is that we're at the start of the February presentation of the modules. And there was a time when the Open University just delivered February presentation modules in the maths department. Yeah. And then we introduced some October modules. And to our surprise, students had a increase in success on the October presentation modules. Not large, but significant. And when, you know, th these are maths boffins, they want to know the reasons why, they want to look at the data. And so lots of careful analysis of the data between the cohorts of students was conducted over years. And taking out all the other factors, there still is an advantage to starting in October. And so you have to wonder why. And the big material difference between a February presentation and an October presentation is the summer holidays. Wow. You know, you've got that great big holiday in the middle. Mm. And, well, it's not in the middle, it's kind of towards the end. So we really need to get people thinking, especially if you're a February starter, about your summer holiday, what you're going to do about it, how you're going to get yourself ready for it. Brilliant. And I bet you've got some lovely structured advice coming from the maths department, <laughs> famed for its logic <laughs> and precision in tables. <laughs> I think I've got some some good sensible um, advice advice for people actually, and and we have a link to a planning tool which we'll discuss with you with you later, okay. and we can share with the the students. But I think it it. it it's all about um, planning from now. Yeah. Thinking, uh, as your widgets will show, thinking about your summer holiday if you haven't, and, and just trying to get organised from from now. So when summer holiday comes along, it won't it won't be too much of a shock. But like you say, Karen, I also think that there's two big things to take into account. <clears throat> One, the reality that that you just have to be re realistic. You may plan to take lots of things away on holiday with you to study, which yeah. I always do. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the reality is that <laughs> yeah. you come back with them and you haven't actually looked at them. Um, but the big thing, and there's quite a lot in, in, the, in the general education literature about this at the moment, the big thing is that if that happens to you, not to be too hard on yourself and to think, OK, I enjoyed my holiday and it was fantastic, but I might have got a bit behind. What do I do now? So this is a great link to your next session, um, Karen. The big thing is always to keep in touch with your tutor yeah, yeah. about every kind of eventuality like, like that. And one of, one of our student support team advisors this morning was saying that was, that was the big thing, yeah. that when they have lots and lots of students speaking with them, and the big thing, the big piece of advice to people is contact your tutor at the first instance you might have yeah. Any, anything you want to ask them. Yeah. Now, if the university knows this, and in particular yeah. if it's been statistically proved, then what I want to know is what they've done about it. Um, and in particular, I've seen some of these study planners that have breaks for Easter, for example, and mm. over Christmas. So there might be some built-in breaks. They're unlikely, in particular, if you're on a February presentation to give you the summer off. An October one, you may be a bit luckier to have some time off in between if indeed you are doing that. But what has the university then done about this fact? Yeah, so the very first thing they did, so for example in the maths department, is we moved all our modules to October starts, right. except for level one where people still need a choice, you need, still need lot, multiple entry points because people don't want to wait a whole year to get yeah. started, yeah. you know, fine, you know, you've still got a good chance of success, but we do want students to have an awareness 
that there is, uh, there is something to take into account. There's something they need to think about. So first of all, yes, we moved the modules we could move, but we still do have some February starters. So what we want to say to students, first of all, is step one, you need to be planning your time. Mm -hmm. And this is something students need to do anyway. And I think it's the biggest piece of advice we could give to students. You know, if we were trying to teach the maths, the first thing we want to teach them is workload planning. Yeah. Now, we have got amazing students. Yes. You know, we have students who they are working, they are looking after families, they're taking care of their lives. They've got hobbies as well, I don't know how, and they're studying. So they've got to juggle a lot of things. But to do that, they have to plan their time. And I, with your students, you must see as well that the students who do well are those who have plan their time and they know how to fit a lot of things in. Yeah, it's amazing because there's no such thing as a typical student. I've got students who are going, you know, in the army and they're off, you know, um, for a few months of the year and so then they have to fit everything in around that and sometimes that can be extended or pulled back and, you know, time can be a variable that sometimes you can plan and sometimes you, you can't have much control over. Yeah, and I think um, this is the kind of the eventuality we can plan for. We know summer's going to be mm. there. So uh, the things I would say are, first of all, draw up your workload plan. Then be realistic, like Sally was saying. You know you're going to get to summer holidays and things might go awry. So can you get ahead? Yeah. You know, can you give yourself that cushion rather than waiting to fall behind? Don't be hard on yourself. If you do fall behind, get in touch, do a catch-up plan. But first of all, can you get ahead? Mm. Have you planned your time and have you given yourself that cushion? Now, time is not always the same, marks are not always the same, and often at the end of a module there might be something more substantial like an end of module assessment or even an exam. So sometimes that very thing that's happening is a little bit more important than it was at the start. What could you tell students about maybe identifying, I guess, where they might be able to plan their time, and if indeed it is something that is maybe overarching that they couldn't necessarily learn very early on, how might they allow some time to be able to spend thinking through those things? I think you're right. I think it's good to look at the um, the assessment guide and to see which uh, assignments, tutor marked assignments, TMAs, have what weighting. Mm. You know, which ones should you be giving more importance to? Be aware that you've got the end of module assessment or the the exam, so you are going to have to allocate time to that. And yes, allocate time accordingly. Mm -hmm. There really isn't a substitute for allocating time to mm -hmm. a task. You know, th there isn't a shortcut. You know, people might want a magic formula. There isn't a shortcut. Allocate time to the task. That's what you have to do. Yeah. And especially if it's an end of module assessment or an exam, as you said, Karen, um, <clears throat> don't plan it to do anything else before yeah. that because you will need that time yeah. to focus on. I've made this mistake very many times as a student myself, thinking, yes, it will be fine to have some other thing planned in your diary, but it's, it's good. Just as Katie said, you know it's coming, so make sure that if you can, and you, it's not always possible, but if you can, keep that, keep that time for yourself. Now, we've asked people um, whether or not they have school-aged children and whether they do things over the um, school holidays and whether they've booked school holidays. If you haven't voted on that, do that now. Just click on the one that you want to let us know your thoughts on, select the item that applies to you and press submit and then your results will send and you can see what everyone else is doing as well. Now, this is a mistake I make every year pretty much as I think, oh, summer holidays are years away. Years! Yeah. And then I never <laughs> plan anything and I think I can fit all of this in and then, surprise, surprise, I find I can't and then I think, oh, I I wish I'd planned some of this. And I see some of my friends who are a bit more organised than I am, and sometimes I do manage a little bit of it, but they'll book kids into summer clubs or, you know, they'll do sort of things yeah. or they'll swap or they'll make some arrangements so that they have some time. And it is one of these things that, like you say, there is no substitution. Time takes time mm. and, yeah. and you can't actually think that you can do more. So some of it is managing these expectations and I guess being kind to yourself that you probably can't entertain a whole group of children all day and then study for eight hours at night and be okay. And I think maybe what, um, well, I, I know I've fallen into this trap and I've seen other people in my position fall into this trap thinking you can do things simultaneously. Yeah. Now, y children will always come and ask for your help. Pick up the phone and your child is by your side immediately. So I don't think you can plan, say, for example, in the summer holidays to be able to have the children around you in the house and work at the same time. So it's planning your space as well as planning your time. So make sure, I think because people are studying for their own goals, people often put their own goals to the bottom of the heap. So I think people will need to prioritize their study 
if they're not going to, uh, if they are going to have the success they want, they are going to have to keep it as a priority and give it that space and time and not just, you know, put their own priorities to the bottom of their heap, you know, be kind to yourself, is what I'm saying. And I think in my own experience, I can only talk for myself, but as a mother, often my own priorities do get landed at the bottom of the mm -hmm. heap, you yeah. know, below the ironing perhaps or something <laughs> else uh, hidden underneath it. But often, you know, it is difficult and you think, oh, it's my study, it's, it's my thing, mm. but actually it doesn't really matter to the well-being of the family, although it does, yeah, but it's it very does. easy to make that not matter. Um, I mean, most of our audience right now don't have school-aged children, 64% don't. Um, worryingly, but not unsurprisingly, I mean, I haven't done this either, no one's planned a childcare cover over the summer holidays yet. Um, but 58% are booked a summer holiday, so that's good. That's <laughs> um, news, yes. Booking childcare, though, I mean, it, you know, it is only one of these options. Other options, I mean, from, from your own experience, what sorts of things have you seen either working for you or your own students about how to negotiate some of that time? Because for our February starters, let's think, over the summer holidays, they're going to be probably having a fifth TMA if they're on a 60 credit module and mm. perhaps studying for an end of module assessment. So two perhaps substantial pieces of work and not forgetting that the end of module assessment, not wanting just to worry anybody, but they are slightly different and they are overarching. So they are a little bit more complex than perhaps an individual TMA that may be more focused. What other things have you seen working for people in terms of how to manage that time over those last two months? You know, I don't know. I have to confess that I'd be a bad person to advise on this because I have just tried lots of things which have degrees of failure. So yes. I think you find pockets of time in that sense. Um, the people who have done it well that I've seen really have used structured paid for care or a very helpful uh, relative who can give you a block of time. Yeah. It really is getting blocks of time rather than tiny snippets that are successful. And figuring out how you're going to do that. I also think that it's, again, and this is going to be a big a big theme running through everything we say, keeping in touch with your tutor. Because if, for example, you've got two TMAs during the summer, mm. it might be that you think to yourself, well, I just can't manage to do absolutely all of them. I can't manage to study absolutely all of the material for absolutely all of the assessments. <laughs> and, and perhaps having that conversation with the tutor to manage the, the workload because because it's always possible, it's always possible to get to work with your tutor and, and possibly also with the student support team to get a survival a survival idea for through the summer. So if you haven't actually managed to plan your time or you have planned your time and it hasn't worked like that, mm. it's still okay to have a different plan and, and to regroup and to be kind to yourself. Mm. Um, so keep in touch with your tutor for that, that sort of sur survival plan to the end of the module. Um, and, I, and I think it's, it, it's, it's a really good idea. Katie and I are very, very keen on the idea of a growth mindset to believe that you can do this. Not to panic, just to say, we can regroup and we can, we can keep on the module, we can enjoy the module, please enjoy your module, and, and, and still plan but not stick rigidly to your plan as Katie's already said. Yeah, yeah. I'd um, like to, sorry, yeah. back that up because one of the two key ways that you can um, fall off a maths module is if you start too high, you know, you jump in at too high a level and you try and do it too fast and then you can quickly believe that you're not good at maths because you've hit an obstacle. But in fact, if you'd start at the right level and give yourself enough time and it's very important to have the belief that you can learn which actually we discover a lot of our students do have that belief in themselves and know that they can grow and learn, um, then you will progress through your module. But if you set yourself too tough a challenge, as in you try and do the work in half the time that's suggested, then you will hit an obstacle and begin to believe you can't do the maths. But the problem isn't the, the subject, the study or uh, engaged in the problem is giving it the time it needs mm. but i do think it's very important to remember as sally said everybody has plans that go west you know you just need to be able to get in touch with your tutor and possibly now we, we don't want you to think about this at the start of the module but possibly think okay i will omit that chunk of that unit because I will just take that hit on that those points, but I'll make sure I have all the understanding of the other parts and I'll have a path through the module that will take me to the end. Now that's a brilliant point because 
so often TMAs are worth, and, and it's different on every module, but often they have a very heavy weighting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can be worth half the, the overall grade for a module. So they can sometimes matter a lot more than TMA5, which may be worth, you know, 20% of, of a 50%, so a relatively <laughs> small amount. But people can see them as two main tasks. And I know the student support team can help, you know, students prioritise and, and maybe, again, take a strategic approach and say, OK, yeah. I'm going to maybe carve off a bit of that to really focus on the end of module assessment. So I want to go to Frank and Stephen and see... Um, if this is something that you often um, find that you're advising students on making those tactical decisions and uh, also what's going on in the chat. Well, at the moment we're talking about ironing, actually. Oh, oh uh, no, but, sorry. But, but there, is, there is method to this. Uh, Elizabeth, she, she was just talking about, you know, managing time and she stopped doing the ironing. So she said if her husband and children want anything ironed, they've got to do it themselves. So that gives her the time she needs to focus on, on her studies. And also um, talking about... And have they been helpful with it? I believe so. Yeah, good. I believe so. Um, actually, they've said they've been very helpful with the housework. Yes. So there we are. That's really good. And uh, PDFs, you know, you can read a PDF on, on, on any smart device these days and you could sit in the bath or take an idle moment wherever you can and just absorb the material, but in a, in a convenient location. It doesn't have to necessarily be about sitting in that set study location that you have. Um, we had an interesting question from Juliana. Um, she said she's got a two-week vacation plan in Norway, which sounds wonderful. She said, how does I get into books when I've got all that beauty around me? And it's, well, if, if a student asked me that question, the first thing I would say is, enjoy your holiday. Yeah. <laughs> life yeah. is life. And, it, you know, that comes first. Your open university studies should fit in with your life yeah. and blend in with that. It shouldn't be all-consuming. So that's the sort of thing that I would advise somebody who's going on a holiday, particularly over the summer holidays as well. But on the contrary, Davin, he said he likes to use holidays to read ahead a little so it gives them a bit of a buffer just in case things go wrong a bit further on in the year as that's well. That's so brilliant. It's nice to be pausable. One of the things I love about OU material is that sometimes, like at an airport, for example, you've got three hours. I don't necessarily want to commit to taking my books, but sometimes you get that dead time where you think... Oh, I just want something interesting to read. And, you know, th those can be good times where you can maybe get a bit ahead if you want to. But I'm not sure, Juliana, I'd, I'd, I'd enjoy the scenery. I think sometimes having a break is really important at, at, at coming back to things. And equally, you know, with things like the ironing, sometimes those household tasks are important. Sometimes I find myself, they can give me a break from something. So sometimes if I've been working all day and then I've got to do something in the evening, I'll just do something really menial. It allows my brain to switch off. And then sometimes I do think, this happened the other night, I was like oh my goodness, I've got to write. And at half nine at night, I was rearing to go and, and then I just went with the flow of it, which was great. But it doesn't happen very often. But sometimes that break from things and just doing something else can actually help shift that flow, I find. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think that has to be part of your workload planning. I completely disagree with you about the ironing. <laughs> Oh, no. We're no. not fans of ironing. No, no, I haven't mass. ironed for 10 years. You know, what's wrong with the creases? Yeah, so there's so some things you can just ditch. I also find that online shopping saves me loads of time. Yes. You know, if you're just thinking yeah. of practical tips, I mean, this I'm, I'm a maths person, this isn't my expertise, but shaving corners off time is something that I do do. Yeah, no, absolutely. Don't iron. Online shop and see if anyone can help you. <laughs> and I also think I brought, I, I also think a good treat to myself as a student is getting a notebook. Oh, so yeah. if you're doing doing something like washing the dishes, for example, yeah. and, and you're thinking of something completely different, like, oh my goodness, why, is, why are my children not helping? And then you think of something that, 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 uh, about your module that you, you just like to write down. So I always find that having a notebook handy is, is, is a good, good thing. Stationery is a very well. dangerous topic here Take at SHL. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a, such a thing. And I also, um, as a mathematician, have a pencil <laughs> with a rubber on the end of it so that I can yeah. rub out and the many mistakes that I make. <laughs> that's OK to make a mistake. Um, but just the idea that when you're on holiday and all relaxed, you might be looking at the beautiful sights in Norway and then somehow think of think of things that actually it's a really good be able to way to be able to sort of test not your recall not not that people would do this in a formulaic way but sometimes if you're just mulling stuff over you can think oh, i don't really know what i remember about what i was reading last week maybe i should have a look back at that etc or you might start making connections with things that can be useful yeah i think in maths as well that you know like sally says if you're just doing something completely different that processing is going on in your subconscious you know i, I wish it would do it all the time but, but every now and then you can, you something can will happen something will pop <laughs> Forward and you'll think, finally, I understand. So with that processing time, that dead time, you know, doing menial tasks, that can really help. You do need to, you know, you, 
your brain is a muscle that you can exercise, but it also needs to rest as well. Um, oh, thank you, Sarah. Sarah loves my shoes. Uh, and uh, Katie says, what is this holiday thing of which we speak? Um, and Libby says that she hasn't had a holiday, I think, for, for quite a while. So we need holidays for those of us who haven't uh, booked those summer holidays yet. I wanted, though, to talk about, in addition to holidays, which I imagine everyone's going to talk about in the chat now, um, this idea of chunking time, because I think it's sort of at odds with some of the other things we say, which is that you should often do everything in 20 minute bursts. Now, this is something I, and I love the way you say, after many failures, because I do think it's a way of sort of trying things and you don't mm, learn definitely. and get the hang of things until you try. No. I'm failing all the time, but my latest um, endeavour is to try and chunk time up. Mm -hmm. And I, what I try and do is I've sort of figured out that around three or four hours is a good thing to try and capture and then I'll try and gear up for that before I do it and think about what I might try and achieve in that time yeah. but still I've got those little chunks that I can't work full on for that amount of time but it's, it's a sort of funny thing when we're looking at study planners where things are chunked up into specific blocks and then sometimes you might say I've got a whole day and I'm sure we can all identify with how easy it is to have a whole day where you think oh, I'll just go make a cup of tea and I'll yeah. just go and do this this and this and then before you know it that whole day is gone so for those students who may not have that organized childcare or they might want to swap things how might they try and chunk that time and what should they maybe aim for in terms of what, what to ha perhaps ask for from people who may be able to help them I think I would say first of all about the 20 minute burst I think that's correct but that doesn't mean if you've got a three hour slot only study for 20 minutes of it you know it might be that you do 20 minutes and you do have a cup of tea yeah you know because it helps enormously yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know do 20 minutes and have a walk around or another way that I found that I can get through quite a volume of work is if I do 20 minutes and I change tasks so I do a different kind of work for 20 minutes I think our materials are structured to give you that kind of um, learning pattern so that you can read and then do some activities or you know you can read you can watch a video so that you are switching activity so yeah the concentration is in 20 minute bursts but you know do make a use of the time that you've got and the time pockets you know you can find and you said that you can't do two things at once but the one thing I often do if I'm sort of cooking is I will have a piece of paper and think about the things I'm going to do and sometimes I'll order them and prioritize them so that when I do get my time on my own at least I've got some ideas and a strategy because sometimes thinking about that strategy can sort of be time on its own yeah I, I think I think um, what one thing that, that, that we'll all know as open university students is when when you have got that TME coming up you know you've got to do something you suddenly want to tidy a cupboard or something Something, yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> so, so actually, and I really don't want to tidy cupboards. I've never got as, as bad as doing the ironing. But so, if you have a chunk of time, just start off with your study. Yeah. Yeah. Start off, start off doing it. It, it. It's like we've got devices that we we have to walk a, yeah. a, a certain amount of time, and at first it's really hard. But you just have to make yourself do it. So studying is the same thing. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to make yourself do it until it becomes something you do and start off with the studying. And I think your, you know, your idea of making a list, you know, like a to-do list, um, I think, uh, well, that's a nice way of bringing nice stationery. I find that if I get myself some nice stationery and I write my to-do lists in it and, you know, I give myself the reward of crossing off those items, um, it's been shown that you can greatly reduce anxiety about something you have to do just by writing it in a list yeah. so that it's there recorded instead of taking up part of your memory, your access memory that you keep having to remember to do it. Write it down, get it on your to-do list and then you know, give yourself the pleasure of ticking it off. <laughs> Oh, well, this is a fabulous session, but unfortunately it needs to end. However, you're back in half an hour, back. so we can pick up on this um, after we've had uh, David coming on and talking to us um, about uh, two modules, which I think will lead very nicely into our study intensity session next. Um, Libby says that she can give up many things, but not watching Student Hub Live. Well done, Libby. <laughs> That's brilliant to hear. <laughs> I'm very pleased. All right. Frank and Stephen will be back. Oh, look at your hats, I say. Well, we're making an effort. You are indeed. And a cowboy. <laughs> well, we have the lovely David George joining us back um, when we're going to look at a very challenging problem, which is when students are studying two modules and they love one more than the other. Um, or perhaps you're starting a new module um, which you're really excited about or less excited about than the way one you were on last on. So this emotional attachment we have to what we're studying and how we might be able to work with that to get the most from it. We'll be back in a few minutes. We're going to have another video which is about Catherine Mansfield. Um, so I'll see you in five minutes for our next session. And Sally and Katie will be back after that again this afternoon. See you soon.